It's time to take off your clothes, enjoy clothes free living, and join us for Naked, Nudist, and Naturist. Welcome to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, the show that celebrates clothes free living for all. I'm your host, Frank Stone. And I'm your correspondent, Lisa Monroe, and I'll be reporting on all things within the Naturist community. So it's time to get naked and join us. And enjoy clothes free living on Naked, Nudist, and Naturists. Welcome in to Naked, Nudist, and Naturists, episode one, believe it or not. How about that? So when we get to episode 1 million, you'll be able to say, you know, I remember when he did episode one. That was a long time ago. (laughs) But we are glad you're with us uh, to celebrate clothes free living for all. I am your host, uh, Frank Stone. Lisa Monroe will be with us uh, on each show to give us a report as a correspondent on what's going on in the world of naturism slash nudism slash just flat out being naked and enjoying life. There's been a lot of discussion out there. What is a naturist? What is a nudist? I guess ultimately it almost doesn't matter. As a part of my personal background, I was allowed to run around naked forever. When I was a kid, into elementary school, into junior high, into high school, even into college, I was naked all of the time. And it's important to point out that naturism, nudism, is not supposed to be sexual in nature ever. If it is, that's something totally different, and we don't do that on this show. And almost don't even want to get into what naturism isn't. Rather focus on what is, because there are a lot of people out there, when you mention naked, or there's a nude scene in a movie, oh boy, there's going to be sex. People equate naked with sex. Not sure why. If you go to a nude beach, you're going to check out the chicks all day and say, this one's hot, that one's not. I don't know. And it almost doesn't matter. You really shouldn't do that. That's not what it's all about. But let's face it, you do the same thing at the grocery store. Yeah, look at that chick on aisle three. Whoa. Or look at that guy in aisle five. Wow, what a nice whatever. We do judge other people by how they look. It's just, I want to say the American way, it's also the world's way. We judge people by how they look. That's not fair. And that's what naturism brings into the mix. When you literally strip away everything, no clothes on, you are who you are. I've heard people say many times the friendliest people in the world are naturists because there's no facade. There's no pretending. We all pretend in life. There were times when I wore about the nicest suits money could buy. Great coat, great pants, expensive shirt, expensive tie, top-of-the-line shoes, you know, for the career I had. And when I walked in, everybody knew there was a guy who's on top of the game because of the way that I was dressed. Sure, it might have been because of my personality and the way I acted too, but before they even got to that, I walked in and I was a man of distinction, as they say, because of the way I was dressed. Now, if you take the midnight custodian of the same corporation where I worked, if we walked in a room at the same time, all eyes would be on me because I was so impeccably dressed, and he was not. He was dressed as a custodian would dress. You don't want to get your good clothes dirty. What if we both walked in naked? Ooh, now it's a totally different ballgame. I have no advantage over him. He's not under advantage to me. We're both equal at that point. Maybe that's the biggest lesson of all. Taking your clothes off in social situations and just enjoying life for what it is, takes away all of those uh, falsehoods and facades and pretends and all that good stuff, and you are just you. And that's why people will tell you naturists are the friendliest people around because there's nothing to hide behind. We're just who we are. I know a number of families uh, who are naturist families, and I'm going to use the terms naturist and nudist somewhat interchangeably. Not everybody does. A nudist sometimes has the Uh, kind of hidden meaning that uh, there might be a little bit of sex involved. That's not necessarily true. Not everybody uses nudist that way. I called myself a nudist forever until I met up uh, with Stefan Deshane. He owns the Bear Oaks 
uh, Park up uh, near Toronto, also does his own podcast, uh, The Naturist Living Show. And he's all about naturism. And he told me the difference is naturism is just enjoying life uh, for what it is, enjoying nature, enjoying each other, and, and just being healthy about our minds and our bodies. Whereas nudism might have a connotation of uh, a little offhanded uh, behavior. That doesn't mean that it's true for everybody, but it's a general understanding. So whether I'm a nudist or a naturist, I guess it doesn't matter to me what you call me or what you call yourselves. Just being naked and enjoying the clothes-free living. Because who wants to wear clothes? It's just kind of a, a pain in the neck. You have to iron things. You have to find things. You have to match things. And even when you go swimming, maybe especially when you go swimming, you, know, you get out of the pool, you get out of the ocean, the lake. Not only are you dripping wet, but your suit is totally wet. And the first thing you want to do is get out of that suit and get dried off. Well, if you're not a naturist, you're not going to do that. You'll stay in a wet suit all day. Seems a little bit silly. But I've noticed over the years the, uh, the, the naturist families seem to be the most the healthiest families in terms of their mental outlook on life. There's no games. There's no hiding. There's no, ooh, guess what I saw? Uh, that doesn't even, even enter into the equation because that's not what it's about. I had a somewhat odd situation. My dad was frequently naked around the house. My mom and sister were never naked around the house. That was where they came from in terms of their background. Men were always naked. Women were hardly ever naked except in the bedroom with their own man. Well, that's not naturism either, but that's what they did. And so I was allowed to be naked all the time. Didn't matter who came over. Uh, my mom would have friends of hers over, and there'd, there'd be old Frank Stone running around the house naked at, at age 2, at age 5, at age 15, at age 20. And everybody knew and nobody cared. Now, in my neighborhood, uh, we had, I don't want to say we had a naturist neighborhood because that would be uh, too far stretched to make that claim. But we did uh, get naked all of the time. Uh, the boys in the neighborhood, we'd get together and play baseball. We'd get naked and go swimming. We'd sometimes play in the backyard naked. We definitely had to get naked before we came in whosever house we were at to have lunch. We'd have to get our clothes off and hose off and get all the dirt and grime off of us and then go in naked and eat lunch and come back, and get dressed outside, and, and resume our game playing. All normal and natural. See, if you're not used to that, it might seem a little bit strange. I mean, you, you guys got naked and then went inside? That sounds weird. No, it, it, but it wasn't weird. And until you've experienced it, you probably can't accept it. Uh, when I talk to people about those days and they stop to think about it, it's like, yeah, well, that makes perfect sense. Why would somebody want 10 boys in their house who are dirty and sweaty and smelly. and <laughs> Why do you want that in your house? No, you guys take your clothes off, hose off, and then come in. Uh, one time I went to uh, stay with my cousin for a weekend, and his mother, of course, uh, oh, I called her my aunt. She was really my first cousin. He was my second cousin. He was my age. My first cousin, his mother, was the same age as my mom. So I called her aunt and considered her an adult figure, which she was. And we got ready for bed one night, and uh, the deal was get ready for bed, shower, get ready for bed, come down to the kitchen, we'll have a little snack, and then we'll go to sleep. And we came down, I entered the kitchen, my cousin was naked at the kitchen table, and I had my pajamas on. And uh, my aunt looked at me, and she goes, what are those? We don't do this around here. You know, we don't wear pajamas around here. She expected the men in her house to have no clothes on. Same family, same genealogy as my mom. 100% normal, nothing inappropriate at all. And that sometimes people have a hard time getting over that. You mean you just hung out naked? Yeah, yeah, always did, still do to this day. Uh, I'm naked all of the time. Now, I'm appropriate. There's a big difference there between just whipping it off and running down the street or stepping out of the bushes, hey, look at me. Now, that's grotesquely inappropriate. It should never happen. But naturism, being naked in the right settings, absolutely. And I look for the right settings. I try to be naked every chance I get. So am I naked in my home? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Am I naked when I go in my swimming pool? 100%. Am I naked at the beach? Uh, 95%. <laughs> 
I live about an hour from the closest uh, nudist resort and about an hour 20 from the nearest uh, nude beach. So neither is convenient. However, I am very close to a public beach, and I'll show up there with my clothes on. I'll walk down uh, away from people and then take my clothes off and enjoy clothes-free living on the beach. And nobody can see. I'm not there to show off or to be seen. I don't want anyone to see me. And if I go down there with friends, we all take our clothes off and just have a good time enjoying each other's company. And again, until you've experienced it, you probably can't totally grasp the joys involved. Instead of sitting around shooting the breeze with your suits on and maybe even a shirt on at the beach, you're just naked. You've literally stripped away all of the barriers and you're just there to have a good time. And that's probably the biggest difference, the biggest hurdle for people to get over. I mean, you can get naked with other people, and sex never pops up as an option? And the answer is yes, and that's what naturism is about. You know, I don't go to a, a naturist resort or a nudist resort to have sex or to check out the women. I can check out the women at, at the grocery store. Now, that does not mean that I do not notice them. You know, we don't want to be totally silly here. If a good-looking woman walks past me, I'm going to notice her, whether she's uh, totally naked or in five layers of clothing. I'm going to notice that she's attractive. But then it quickly goes out of my head. I don't just continue to look at her and stare at her. That would be grossly inappropriate and not even what I'm all about and certainly not what naturism is all about. I even go back to the days at the old boys club, you know, YMCA boys club, mandatory nude swimming uh, for males. But at the boys club, you know, they had female employees, they had female employees at the desk, they had female lifeguards, yet all guys were naked, whether they were kids or teens or even adults or even fathers. You know, dads were allowed to swim with their kids and you had to be naked. First time uh, my cousin, the same cousin I talked about a few moments ago, first time we went there, we walked into the pool area with our suits on, and we got yelled at by the, the head lifeguard. And even though there were signs everywhere, you know, no swimsuits allowed, we just didn't see them. We didn't pay attention. Uh, but we had to get naked, and we had to take our uh, suits off if we wanted to be a part of the boys' club and, and swim. So we did, and it was totally normal and totally natural. Even with female guards there, they didn't care. They, they were there to make sure we didn't drown or otherwise get hurt or run on the wet deck and so on and so forth. And throughout the day, throughout the sessions, throughout the evenings, you know, mothers would show up to pick up their sons. They'd have their daughters with them. They'd walk in in the pool area, and there's you know, tons of naked guys swimming around. Not a sexual situation. Not one time that I see a female walk in and say, hey, you over there, come here, big guy, let's, let's have a good time. No, because that's not what it's about. There are places you can go for that stuff. You know, they have sex clubs and swingers clubs, and you can go find all kinds of stuff. Hey, big fella. Hey, young lady. But that's not what naturism is about, and that's not what I'm about, and never did that and never will. That's why we're not covering the, uh, that stuff on this show. It's all about naturism, nudism, enjoying a clothes-free life. You know, there are st uh, studies out there that show that uh, naturism, being naked, can actually grow your self-esteem. That's true. A lot of kids, I, I want to say more girls than boys, but boys too, you reach a certain age where suddenly you're very aware of your body. Oh boy, this is a little too fat, this is a little too skinny, this is a little whatever, and you become self-conscious. Well, if you grow up naked from the very beginning, when you hit that age, you're not really self-conscious anymore because you're all, you've always been out there. Here I am, world. Accept me as I am, and let's move along. That's why I mentioned the naturist families seem to be the healthiest families out there. I've always enjoyed watching a naturist family at the beach or even at a, at a resort or even when I visited their homes because they seem happy healthy, well-adjusted, mentally healthy, confident, and as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, high self-esteem. You know, it's easy to get caught up in that whole uh, Hollywood thing. You have to have the perfect body, the perfect face, and the perfect hair to get out there and show your body to the world. Well, none of us are ever going to achieve that. That's not natural 
human being looks. You know, a lot of those are enhanced by surgery and other cosmetics, and we don't do that as normal human beings. Our deal is here I am, accept me as I am, I've accepted myself as I am, and now let's move forward and have a great time today. So what about you? Do you hang around your house naked? Do you have people in your home who are naked as well? Have you been to a nudist beach, a nudist resort? Do you hang out in the backyard uh, naked? I, I've actually done gardening outside. I can't work in my entire backyard and not be seen, but there are parts where I can. And believe me, when I'm working in those parts, the clothes come off. I would never, ever wear clothes ever again unless I had to. And society does say that I have to at certain times. And that would be one of those times working in your yard in perfect view of neighbors. Unless you have an understanding with those neighbors, uh, you probably need to avoid that. You know, I've been to public pools and public beaches where suits are required and it seems like everybody's a little self-conscious. They cover this up, they cover that up. Uh, they're a little standoffish, a little bit rude. You try to talk to people, and they just, you know, get away from me, pal. I don't know who you are. I've never experienced uh, that behavior at a naturist resort or a nudist uh, beach. Everybody's friendlier. We are who we are. No barriers, no facades, no hiding behind whatever. Here we are. You accept me as I am. I'll accept you as you are, and life moves on. Much healthier way to go through life. Now, I will tell you, even after a lifetime of uh, being naked, 24 hours a day, whenever possible, I did go to my first uh, nude, nude resort, probably in my 30s, and I was a little bit nervous. thought, okay, everything I've read about these places, you go there, you get naked, other people get naked, and you just enjoy the sun. And I kept even asking myself as a lifelong nudist, naturist, is it possible to do that? Can people really get naked with each other and not have some free-for-all sexual orgy going on all day? So I went, and I got there uh, early, took all my clothes off, and little by little people began to show up, and they took their clothes off too. And before you know it, we had 10, 15, 20 people sitting around the pool, all naked, all walking around uh, to get a drink or a towel, and carrying on life as though it were 100% normal, which, by the way, it is. And that's the whole point. When you accept it as normal, life gets enhanced tremendously. I made a number of contacts and really a number of friends that day. Total strangers, but because we were naked and enjoying the sun together, all the barriers were gone, we were friendlier, and we made some good relationships there. Now, I will admit, on a nude beach, there are sometimes uh, people who go there to prance around. Hey, look at me, world. Look how good-looking I am. Well, okay. You can do that if you want, but that's not the purpose behind naturism and nudism. The purpose is to enjoy life as it was intended to be. Let's not forget the old expression, we were born naked. We really were. Why do you think we were born naked? Well, because it's 100% natural. But there are people who go to a nude beach to check out other people. Hey, look at the, the blonde over there. Hey, look at, look at that guy over there. Well, again, you've missed the point. And the people who go to a nude beach and stay in their clothes, well, could be one of two reasons. They just don't want to get naked. They just want to look at other naked people. Or maybe they're a little shy. It's their first time. They're kind of inching in, and maybe a shirt will come off. Maybe the top will come off, and eventually maybe they'll get naked. But until you actually try it, and it's social naturism. And again, uh, Stefan Deshane, uh, Bear Oaks uh, uh, Naturist Park up near Toronto, also has his show, The Naturist Living Show. He was the first one to mention that to me. Social naturism is where it's at. You know, hanging out by yourself naked in your house is great. But it's when you get together with other people. Either have people over, you go to their house, you go to the beach together, you go to a resort together. That's when you get the full effect of what naturism is all about. No pretenses, no nonsense, just people having a very good time together. You're listening to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, episode one today. Glad you're with us. I want to get to a report now from our correspondent, Lisa Monroe. She's a longtime writer, radio producer, a correspondent, a journalist. She's not been a lifelong naturist, but she's been a naturist for 20 years. And once she got in, she instantly embraced it. Like, you mean I can be naked 25 hours a day with other people and it doesn't have to be sexual? Once she learned that, 
I don't know if her clothes have ever gone back on. <laughs> I'm living the naturist life and loving every second of it. So let's get to uh, the report now from our correspondent, Lisa Monroe. So let's head out to our uh, correspondent for the show, Lisa Monroe. Good morning, Lisa. How are you today? Good morning, Frank. I'm doing great. Good to have you with us. I- I'm guessing, just like we want our listeners to be, you are clothes free today for the- for our talk. Absolutely, that's the only way to go. <laughs> it really is. I mean, I- unless I go to the store or outside in the middle of the street, and I, I don't have any clothes on, I just feel happier about that. It- feel free. That's why they partially why they call it clothes free. But you also feel free, don't you? Absolutely. And I remember when I used to um, work um, in a very high powered office type environment that I could not wait. I'd be unlocking the door to my place and ripping clothes off as I went through the door. So yes, it's a, it's just a much calmer and happier way to exist. Oh yeah. Well, there are many times, and of course I never told anybody this, but uh, when I was uh, in my other career, you know, corporate world, for lack of a better term, there would be times at night, or especially on the weekends, when nobody would be there. I'd be alone, and you know, the clothes came off, and I got more work done in less time than if I would have kept my suit on. It's just uh, funny how that works, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think you, you get into that clothes environment kind of mode, and you're okay for a while, and then suddenly when you realize you don't have to have that on anymore, off it comes. It's oh, like yeah. you can't get them off quick enough. So life gets better right away. But well, you're here to uh, give us a report. So what in the world's going on uh, from your perspective in the world of naturism? Well, you know, it's summer and it's time to think about all those all over tans. And so wherever better can you get an all over tan than a nude beach? I mean, that's about the only place you can anymore. <laughs> and or your backyard if you have good fencing. So um I wanted to just talk a little bit about the new beaches that are available in the U.S. Now, there's a lot more than what we'll talk about, but I chose a um, list compiled by a French swimsuit company. And and two of the top 20 beaches on their list are in Florida. Wow. And one is in California. And that's a worldwide list? Worldwide list. I mean, there's beaches from Brazil and Greece and Italy and um, I think even one in Canada that are on the list, but the only three made it from Florida on this particular list. Hey, and it, and all the lists kind of coincide with each other. They're almost all the same. They just change locate numbers on the list of which okay. beaches are the tops. Mm-hmm. But um, But number one is, and you may know this beach, is Hallover Beach in Miami. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I, <laughs> I, I was there only once. Wish I could go every day, but uh, yeah, I was there once and uh, you know, I already knew what to expect, but I was just blown away by just how open and free. And they actually had police everywhere up in uh, like towers overwatching everybody just in case somebody decided to do something stupid and get away from naturism and make it more sexual. They didn't. And uh, life was very good. You know, people walking up and down the beach, people you know, enjoying the sun, taking in the rays, people swimming. It was like an, a, a normal function, which it is, right? It is a very normal function. And once people get past that little barrier of, you know, oh, my gosh, they don't have clothes on. Who cares? No one even notices. I mean, because we, can, we kind of all look the same in various and sundry ways. So mm-hmm. we need to just get past that that kind of our own fear. I think it's more than anything. And I'll tell you, the first time you do it, it's kind of scary, but, <laughs> but it's, uh, um, but once you do, yeah, you never go back. So no. I, and I have been to Hallover Beach as well, and it mm-hmm. is crowded and it is fun. And it's in many ways more relaxed than a lot of other beaches I've been to. And it just seems to be, um, the people are very content to be there. Yeah, a couple of things I noticed about that. Well, actually, several, but I was mentioned a couple. At the north end of the beach, there's a, a pretty large hotel, several stories high. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, if you get a room in that hotel and your window is facing south, you have a perfect view of the nude beach all day long. That, that might be a good place to, you know, spend the night and also hit the beach the next day, right? Absolutely, I think so. And and you know, there's a this is Miami. Even the Miami Convention Bureau came up with this wonderful slogan that, you know, come take your clothes off. It's fun. And because they recognize that this is a a major part of tourism for them because they're one of the few places, especially in this area where you can come and the beaches are warm all year round for the most part. And everyone's kind of 
you know, just very open and very comfortable with what's going on there. Yeah. The other thing I noticed at the south end of the nude beach, there's a sign that basically says, you know, if once you walk past this sign, you might see nude sunbathers. There's no other barrier. It's not like a brick wall 10 feet high. It's just you have the beach, you have a sign, then you have naked people. And I thought, well, that's just kind of silly. It's, <laughs> why even have a sign at all? Just, hey, here we are. Uh, but what I noticed is a lot of people, and more the, more women than men, but a lot of people went to that sign, stayed on the clothed side, set up their chairs, stayed clothed, and they had a perfect view of the nude beach. I thought, well, that kind of defeats the purpose. It you know, truly all, does. Yeah, we're all supposed to be naked and enjoying naturism, not uh, like a peep show or making it sexualized, which I always hate. It's not supposed to be that way, and it wasn't that way to start off, but that's a couple of unique features about Hall Over Beach. The, the hotel, the sign, and the police were everywhere. Absolutely. If anybody even anybody thought about doing anything, uh, they'd be shut down right away. But you've been there before, you said? Yes, I have. And I think yeah. the, and my observations are the same, uh, except I didn't really notice the hotel being there, but that's a very good point. But what I do... S- think is that people are inherently curious so they're and but they're also inherently so closed in this this rigid shell of having to be clothed having to be uh, you know the good modest person that they always use that sexual connotation as the reason they don't do it and they can't get past that and see that the body's a beautiful thing it should be celebrated and we should be enjoying life and, yeah. you know, just it, and if that's what you enjoy, fine. If it's not, then stay on the other side. But, but you know, just to sit on the edge and watch is kind of creepy yeah. <laughs> to me. That, that's not even what naturism is all about. But oh. I didn't mean to get off uh, on that beaten uh, path. But what else do you have besides a uh, hole over? Well, number 20 on the list is another beach in Florida called Playa Linda. And it's oh, yeah. located um, right at the Kennedy Space Center. So you kind of... Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful beach. It's part of the Canaveral National Seashore. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also a place that's excellent for surfing. And you can, you know, sit on your towel and watch a rocket launch from the Kennedy Space Center there. It's a beautiful (laughs) place. So it's kind of, for me, I've always been a space fan. So that's kind of my my place. I would go there in a heartbeat. I have not been to Playa Linda, but I've been to that area. So, um, um, but it's it's kind of off the beaten path. It's a little it's smaller, quieter than than Hallover. So I think if someone really wanted to try it for the first time, this might be a really good place to go because it's just a little less crowded and a little less newsworthy because everybody knows about Hallover. Yeah, and not everybody. I was there once, only once, mm-hmm. and not everybody there is uh, unclothed. Some people keep their suits on, but they can still be there. So. You know, I heard the general rule, you can't make a beach totally nude. You can't force people to take their clothes off. In other words, you can make it clothing optional Mm -hmm. or nude friendly. Uh, But again, to me, naturism is about everybody with their clothes off and just breaking down all of the barriers, no fancy suits, no design or anything. It's just you, the way you were designed to be. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. And I think that we're, we're just... Very uptight. My dad always said that the Puritans coming to the to the U.S. and with their very closed and very um, moralistic tone about the body being, a, you know, shameful and shouldn't be shown, that that's kind of permeated what the U.S. has grown with over the years, and we haven't lost a lot of that quote unquote false modesty. I think, and again, that connotation is. The, a lot of people take it sexual. It isn't sexual. It is openness and freedom, and it's enjoying nature and feeling free. I mean, clothing yeah. without clothing is, you know, it takes the bar- like you said, it takes the barriers away. We become the same people. Yeah, I, you know, I grew up with no clothes on. I don't, I don't know if I ever wore clothes other than when I had to, like going to school, going to church, going outside to play in the street. Otherwise, why wear clothes? And that's just kind of how I grew up as an adult. Now, before we let you go, you had one more, I think, on that list out in San Francisco. Out in San Francisco is Baker Beach. And it's right on the bay, very near the Golden Gate. And San Francisco used to be a city that allowed public nudity regardless of where you were. And it's my understanding now that they kind of reeled that in a little bit. And um, you kind of have to have a permit to to be naked on the street. And 
so it's not quite as relaxed and free as it used to be, but it's still a, a city that's very unique in that respect. And um, so there is public nudity on Baker Beach. You kind of have to go to the north end. It's one of those that, you know, nudes to the left, to clothes to the right sort of thing. But it's, um, but it's a very popular and very open place, very much like Hallover Beach on the West Coast. So there's some anchors for us. And then in between in the U.S., it's a little wonky in some places, but, <laughs> but it's getting there. All right. Well, we appreciate your report. Uh, Lisa Monroe, our naturist correspondent. And you have to do us a favor, probably ask you this on every show. You're going to stay naked all day, right? Well, of course. I might That's have to right. go to the grocery later, but I'll I'll, yeah. I'll resist the urge to not put on clothes then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but naked all day. We don't want you carted away and miss the next show. So yeah, this is very true. The grocery store. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Otherwise, naked all day. And I'll do the And same. you too. <laughs> Absolutely. Again, our correspondent, Lisa Monroe. Lisa, thank you very much. We'll see you on the next show. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. terrific Lisa Monroe, and she'll be with us on every show, giving us her report, what's going on in the world of naturism, nudism, naked stuff all over the place, some fun stuff, maybe some not so fun stuff, uh, depending on what's going on in the world, people trying to stop naturism, for heaven's sakes, can't have people naked, I mean, they were born that way, yeah, but we can't have them continuing to be naked in appropriate places. Now, again, that's that's one of the keys of uh, naturism. You just can't be naked anytime you want. That would be inappropriate. But when you keep it appropriate and you don't just show up naked to show off, then you'll start experiencing what naturism is all about. It's just enjoying the clothes-free life, being barrier-free, accepting yourself as you are, accepting all others as they are. I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. We're both naked and just having a good time enjoying each other's company or some iced tea. How about that? I ran into a lady uh, some years ago from Brazil in the United States uh, visiting. One thing led to another. We began to talk, and uh, she's a, a full-time naturist uh, off the charts when she can be. And she said in her home in Brazil, you're allowed to be naked on your own property, even if it's in a subdivision, uh, even if it's in the front yard. You can't wander up and down the street naked. They do frown on that. But you can be in your front yard cutting the grass, trimming the plants or bushes, and you can be naked. And she said, surprisingly, every time she does that, uh, a lot of young males suddenly uh, ride their bikes uh, past her house several times or develop a soccer game in the street right outside her house. Can you imagine that? <laughs> but that's not what naturism is all about. Uh, she's showing off. Uh, I guess she, in her mind she was not showing off. She was just living a close free life. And she frequently has people over, and some get naked with her, and some don't. But she always stays naked. And she makes it well known, I am a naturist. I'm always naked. If you come over, that's how you're going to find me. And so maybe enter at your uh, own risk, I guess, to an extent. But it doesn't seem to be an issue with her or with her friends. She has a lot of great friends and a lot of great business associates. And she lives a naturist life uh, to the max. You're listening to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, Episode 1 today. On every single show, not only will we have a, a report uh, from correspondent Lisa Monroe, but I'll also have an interview for you uh, with somebody along the lines of uh, naturism, nudism, being naked, enjoying the clothes free life. And today we're going to talk to uh, Renita Westall. We're actually going to play part one of my interview with her today and part two of my interview with her next week. She is from Great Britain, uh, lives there with her husband, and they are naturists uh, 100% of the time. They have a naturist club they uh, are members at, and they visit there every single chance they get, which includes most weekends. Every chance they go, uh, they go, and they do everything naked. They have karaoke, they have dinners, they have whatevers, and everybody is happy and healthy and enjoying life to the fullest. Great body image, great body acceptance, acceptance of each other. No facades, no false walls, just here we are. Let's have a good time. So we'll get to my interview with Renita Westall in just a moment, but I do want to thank you for being with us. And I want to give you our email address, and I'll try to remember to do that at the end of the show as well, nakedforevermore at gmail.com. It's nakedforevermore 
at gmail.com. I'm your host, Frank Stone, and we thank you again for being with us on Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, Episode 1. Well, let's get to my interview now with the terrific Ranita Westall uh, from the country of Great Britain. She's a naturist, a social naturist, and she's here to tell us all about the joy of basically living life without your clothes whenever possible, never inappropriately, never in the wrong places, and not as a vehicle to do untoward activities. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the mental outlook, the, the emotional well-being, and obviously the physical aspect as well. All about social naturism today. So let's talk to her right now from Great Britain. My interview with Ronita Westall. On the other end of our line this morning is a terrific lady from the country of England, the UK, about, uh, I think, about four hours away from London. If you can kind of picture the uh, the map of England, you kind of sort of know where that might be. And it's all about, well, let's just get right down to it. It's about taking our clothes off today. What in the world's going on? Uh, naturism is, is exploding all over the world. It seems like it's exploding in the UK much more. And we want to talk about that today and just exactly what it is. It's not what most people think it is. It's not a bunch of people showing up, taking their clothes off, and having all kinds of you know, inappropriate fun, I'll call it. It's totally different. So let's bring her to the show this morning. She can explain what it's all about. From England, Ranita Westall. Uh, good morning, Ranita. How are you today? Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. Life in England, I'm guessing, at this time of year is a little on the cold side, maybe a little damp as well. It is a bit chilly, but the sun's out today. Well, that's not bad at all then. Now, what's, uh, now I know you guys do things in Celsius. We're still in Fahrenheit. What will the temperature be today in England? Uh, oh, it says 46 Fahrenheit on my... Well, that's not too bad, actually, for this time of year, right? Uh, I don't think you could go naked out there at the moment. It's a <laughs> chilly. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> you want to keep your coat out for sure. Uh, so let's just get right into it uh, right away. Maybe because you practice naturism, the lifestyle, just tell our listeners, what is naturism? What's it all about? And naturism is about uh, being free from clothes, enjoying the fresh air, the sunshine, relaxing with no inhibitions, uh, very safe from uh, all the outside world, really. I find there's more intimidation when I've got my clothes on than there is when I'm naked. Okay, now how do you get to that point? Because I know a lot of people who, even when they go to their doctor for a complete physical, they get embarrassed when they have to remove clothes. So how do you get to the point where not only are you not embarrassed, you look forward to it and you actually enjoy it and feel better about things. How do you get to that point? Uh, well, I, I chat to women on uh, on the chat room and I try to persuade them to realize that it's not embarrassing to take your clothes off. Uh, there's no nobody looks at you, judges you. So as a woman, you can feel comfortable. It's a safe environment and it's just relaxing and so friendly. Okay, now a lot of women I've talked to over the years, I mean, even dating back to childhood until now, uh, they believe, and they're probably correct, that just about every man out there is looking at them, looking at their body and checking them out. And if they go to, buy, go to the grocery store, men are checking them out. Hey, check out that one on aisle three. That's with clothes on. And so women tend to be a little, I don't want to say more bashful, because when you go to the beach, they're not so bashful there. But in society, they generally are because they're aware that, okay, everyone's checking me out, not cool. So how do you get to that point? Now, you're, I was talking about women at the grocery store with clothes on, and you're, you're just living your life with clothes off and having no issues with it. That's the part that most people can't wrap their head around. So how do you get to that point where, okay, I have no clothes on at all, and I'm feeling really comfortable about it. Once you're in uh, the nitrist environment, you're at a beach, you're at a club, you're at an event. As soon as you get there and you see the friendly people, you soon take your clothes off, you soon get into the spirit of uh, nitrism. Okay, I talked to a guy who, uh, I don't want to mention his name because I don't have permission to do it, but he's uh, big into the nitrism movement. In fact, I think he's president of the international nitrism, whatever it's called. And, uh, and he said it basically breaks down barriers. Now, you could be, I don't know, I'll just make something up. You could be uh, an astronaut who went to college for 20 years, you became an astronaut, or you can have never gone to school at all. But when you're at a naturist club and you neither one, have your, you, neither one of you have your clothes on, you're basically equal. So there's no pecking order. There's no I'm better than you are because I have a more expensive shirt on. 
is that part of it the attraction of it too it's just it just kind of equalizes things and we're just human beings yes. not, a rich, not a rich guy not a poor guy right yes very much so uh i'm a, a lowly little housewife and i sit next to solicitors um surgeons and when you get to that environment they're the same they're, there is no barriers in, you know in professionals it's uh it's a good environment. Okay, now, uh, I was also told there's a difference between nudism and naturism, maybe just the connotation. If you say nudism, it's kind of a code word amongst people. Hey, lots of fun things are going to happen tonight, baby. Uh, but naturism is more of a lifestyle, more of what you're doing, correct? That's correct. I think of nudism as being at home nude. But naturism, you're one with nature. Okay, I hadn't thought about that. Now, we still have most places in the world where you can't just go outside and walk up and down the street with no clothes on. So how does one pull that off at home? Obviously, you can be have no clothes on if you're in your own home, and I think a lot more people do that than will admit to it. But you can't really do it in your backyard or your front yard or anything else outside, right, unless you have total privacy? In the UK, we can go naked as long as we're not uh, creating an offence, uh, as long as somebody isn't offended by what you're doing. If they ask you to put your clothes back on, then you have to adhere to that. But it's not illegal in the UK. Oh, I didn't realize that. So you, you could go outside in the back or down the street, no clothes on, as long as nobody complains. You can just... back garden, you can. I'm not, it isn't permitted in the streets uh, as such because people okay. would get offended. Okay, so you do have to remain on your own property? More or less, yes, you do. Okay. But there are places where... Um, British naturism hires places where it's permitted to go naked, and that's a public place that they hire to do that. And I've talked to you a little bit uh, before off air. That is not something that you do, though, right? You don't go in your backyard with no clothes on. You go outside, you're dressed. Is that correct? That's correct. I live in a block of flats, so it's all communal all around where I live, so... I wouldn't, uh, and I'm, I live on a main road, so I wouldn't go naked around here, okay. but I do in my home. Yeah. Now, if you were to go out in your backyard or outside your, your place, how many people could see you? Either they're outside too or they're uh, passing by or they're in their windows. Just oh, yes. in theory, how many, like 20, 50, 100? I don't even know. About 25 in the immediate okay. backyard. But as I say, I'm on a main road, so it could be hundreds yeah, and so you got to be careful about that, which makes sense. Now, you and your husband, as I understand, belong to a naturist club. and that's something, that's something Yeah, that's something that's also foreign to a lot of our listeners, I'm sure. What is a naturist club? Uh, I'm, at naturist, I'm at Telford Naturist Club, and uh, it's a very so safe environment. There's a swimming pool, there's a hot tub, there's a sauna, there's a massive wooded area to go and walk around, have barbecues, look at the wildflowers and sometimes the uh, the, the wild animals, uh, squirrels and foxes and things. And it's just chatting to people, relaxing. Um, they have barbecues. Um, certain clubs hire the club and they bring along their families and there's bouncing castles um, there's barbecues outside the clubhouse. Uh, it's a very nice social club. Okay. How many people would you show up on a given day or a, a given weekend, just in general? High tier season, there's about 200. Um, low season, it can be about 50. Okay, well, that's a pretty good number. And you actually live there for the weekend when you go there or stay the night there? How, how does that work? If you've got a pitch, I've got a caravan. It's a touring caravan. We tow it with our car. With our car. Okay. Um, you can stay there 11 months of the year. Um, it's not officially for residents. It's a holiday resort. Uh, so we can go 11 months of the year. Okay. Now, you mentioned uh, between off-season and on-season, it could be 50 to 200 people on any given day, and all of that is just – people practicing naturism, no, I don't want to say illicit activity, but no stuff going on in the back room with somebody to whom you're not married? 
um, any sexual ex, sexual activity at our club is a no no. Complete anything they see that's untoward, um, that, that they get it's eliminated. If there's a guy staring at the children, he's out. Yeah. Um, things like that. No, it isn't permitted. Yeah, and, and that's the part a lot of people struggle with coming to grips with is that it it is uh, naturism, it is natural, it's friendly, and not all the other stuff that we see on TV or in the movies. Maybe that's where all that comes from. Somebody takes their clothes off, oh boy, it must be time for sex. But that no. is not necessarily the case, right? It is not the case, no. No, it is not. Now, from what I've read, it appears though there's quite a, an explosion on what they call social naturism. Kind of like you said, you know, it's your club, people getting together and enjoying the lifestyle. But it also seems to be bigger percentage-wise in Great Britain. Is that true? I mean, what I'm reading, am I correct in that assessment? It's a lot more people in Great Britain do it than other countries in terms of percentage? I don't think so. We have British mm-hmm. Naturism Organisation, and they're very good for introducing you to naturism or the events they lay on uh, within a safe environment. But I don't think we were as free as uh, Europe, Germany. Um, we went to Croatia and it, it seemed a lot more freer than Britain. We are a bit more reserved in the UK towards naturism. Oh, okay. Um, but there, at the same time, there are a lot of people who practice naturism in Great Britain. Yes, there's lots of clubs, there's lots of events, uh, there's lots of swims. Uh, so, yes, there's quite a lot for us nitrous here, and they are well attended. Okay, and a club is, uh, I'm guessing, closed to outsiders? Like people can't just drive in and check everybody out and leave? you got to either be a member or not? Um, you can go as a visitor, but you have to phone up and they do checks on you before you enter the club. And then you're shown around, and there are members there that are keeping an eye on visitors to make sure they integrate how we wish them to be. Okay, now what if somebody shows up there, let's say they show up at your club or any club, and they say, I just want to come out for the day and check it out, maybe I'll become a member. I've heard all about this naturism stuff, never tried it, so I want to try it. And they show up and they they just can't take their clothes off. They just can't do it. And for whatever reason, psychological, emotional, physical, who knows, can they still hang out all day or are they, are they basically told, you know, you got to participate or you got to leave? There's a lot of women that don't like being naked okay. and they stay in a sharong or a, a bathrobe or whatever they feel comfortable in. And if they feel more comfortable seeing everybody relaxing and enjoying nitrism, some of them do get naked, but there are a lot that do not. Yeah. But it's free for both. Even if they stay dressed, they're allowed to stay at the club? Yes, they are. It's not the rule that you have to be naked. Okay. Well, that's actually pretty helpful then if people want to just check it out, right? Uh, you don't have to participate right away. You can go, go no. check it out say, well, is this for me or not? You're not really sure, but you get a chance to check it out. Yeah, come along and check us out and relax and get to know us. And, and if you feel comfortable, go naked. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, you mentioned uh, Germany and Croatia. Uh, the country I, I always hear about, and I've never been to it, so that's why I'm asking you, is the country of France. They tend to be uh, more liberal with regard to naturism. Is that true? And again, I've never been there, so that's why I'm asking you. Yeah, very much so. Their resorts are really catering for naturist families. Yes, uh, it's, it's it's more open than here. Yes. There's that, that one town, I think it's toward eastern France at one time. I don't know if it's still the deal. I can't think of the name of it, but. Basically, you can live uh, the naturist lifestyle even while you're shopping, right? The, the, the whole town is des- designated for that. You know what I'm talking about? I've heard that. And there's one in Germany. Yeah, there's quite a few of those places where you can go shopping and live as a naturist there. Yes, I've heard yeah. that. I haven't been to one, but. Uh... Yeah, I wonder, you know, what would happen if somebody is not into naturism, never tried it, never thought about try, uh, trying it, but they wander into a club like yours, not knowing what it is. Uh, I mean, does it say in the front gate, like, hey, when you come in here, a bunch of us have our clothes off, or does it just say, you know, Club 101A and come on in? On the gate, it's got TNC in big letters. Uh, it's like a big flag on the gate. 
Okay. Uh, some you you have to press a buzzer, which is is a loud buzzer. Somebody comes to the gate, and they ask you what your purpose is to visit there. So you are checked out at the gate, uh, and then when they're satisfied that you've booked in, you're a genuine nitrous, then they allow you in. Okay, I had a, a teacher back in high school, and he didn't tell me this when I was a high school kid. He told me, you know, several years later, uh, that where we, well, he was my band director, where we went to band camp, apparently there was a naturist uh, park or resort not too far from there. I, I didn't know that, still don't know where it would be. Uh, but he and some other people decided, you know, why don't we just drive in and pretend like we're lost? <laughs> and they did. And of course, that you know, the people run, like you guys just can't drive through here like it's a you know a scenic tour of the uh, the jungle in South Africa. Uh, so they had to leave. But do people ever try those stunts, or basically they can't get through the gate unless they're okayed? That's correct. Yes, you have to uh, check in first. Yeah, you have to make a phone call. Okay. Now, do you find in, in the world of naturism, and I'm only going by what other people have told me, men are more, more likely to participate and more quickly participate than women. Women kind of take it a step at a time and might get there and might not get there, whereas a lot of men kind of get there fairly quickly. Is that true? There are far more men and they're far more outgoing than women. But when it came to my husband, I persuaded him to be a nitrist. It was the other way around with us. Is <laughs> <Okay>. that <laughs> something you've done for a long time, even before you met him? No, I just fancied the idea. I, I fancied uh, being free from clothes at a beach. I didn't want tan lines. I just wanted to get out there and enjoy the freedom. Well, I'm just curious now if you can share with us, what was his reaction when you said, uh, honey, I, I think I, why don't we both whip our clothes off and go to the beach or the resort? Did he look like, at you like, have you lost your mind? Or did he say, yeah, let's do it? No. No, he, he looked online and found a beach in Benidorm and then he uh, found British Nitrism Organisation and uh, we went to the events and, and that's how we found Telford Club. Um, so our world opened up, yeah. yeah, from that point. Now they have, uh, I heard some people talking online about this in preparation for this show, they have what they call the World Naked Bike Ride. Oh yes, I've heard of that. They stage them all over the world in various cities, in the U.S., the Europe, and I don't know where else. But basically, that's, it, it is what it says it is. You show up with your bike, you take your clothes off, and you ride around in a designated route, and everybody can show up and watch. How do they get away with that? And it, I've even been told police are there to make sure nothing bad happens. So for one day, it's allowed in various cities, right? It's, it's legal, but I presume they have to apply to the authorities for that to go ahead. I've never been to one. I've never seen one. I've seen pictures, but I assume they have to apply to the authorities. Yeah, well, probably for a permit to close yes. the streets or that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yes. So, what would that? What would the purpose of that be? Basically, just kind of like your club, except in a city for one day, just uh, social naturism. It's not anything beyond that. No, it's nothing beyond that. They just okay. um, bike ride in around the city or place where they've booked and uh, enjoy nitrism. Okay. And I've talked to some people who are runners, you know, they run the 5k, the 10k, the whatever, and they have some of those uh, where you run with no clothes on. And my biggest fear, if I were to ever try that is what if I fall, like my entire body will get scraped, <laughs> scraped up and, and beaten and bruised by the ground. Is that something you've seen before? Or is that something you've done before? I haven't seen it. And I haven't heard of that. Actually, I've heard of, um, Naked swimmers, when they go to the seaside and they have a, a day out at the seaside and um, go swimming. And so you mentioned uh, beaches before. They do have nude beaches in Great Britain where you can go and not wear any clothes and basically life is okay. People leave you alone. Yes, there's quite a few nitrous areas at beaches. They are sectioned off so people know when they walk along that beach, there will be nudists there. So it is well signposted. So it's your choice if you want to walk through that area. Yes, we have some wonderful beaches for that. Okay. I worked with a counselor years ago, a woman. She was married, and she and her husband and some other people went on a cruise. I don't know where. And they got off the boat, and uh, they, they walked you know, walked the plank to the mainland, It's, uh, I guess to a beach. <laughs> it said uh, nude bathers, and it point, had a, an arrow pointing to the left. And it said, uh, you know, clothed 
bathers and an arrow pointing to the right. And they decided, oh, what the heck, let's go to the left and see what happens. So even if you don't practice the lifestyle, people have a curiosity about it, right? Have you found that? Yes, I have indeed, yes. People are very curious for the freedom of taking your clothes off and going for a swim. It's very invigorating. It's very, it's lovely, lovely feeling. Yeah, and the whole thing, and this is the part other, you know, people can't get their heads around either, is it's totally legal when done properly. This is not something you're doing underhanded or under the table, hoping you don't get caught. It's actually legal and appropriate, and I'm guessing emotionally maybe a little healthier for people. Oh, indeed, yes. It's a very healthy environment. The sunshine is good for you in small doses, obviously, Um, but it, it, it just... Uh, the fresh air and seeing people and chatting to people. It's a wonderful uh, lifestyle. And the beaches are wonderful that that we've been to Mm -hmm. in England. And there you go, uh, part one of my interview with Renita Westall uh, from Great Britain, a naturist. She and her husband uh, go to their club just about every single weekend, certainly whenever they get a chance to do so, uh, they do so. And what did you think of Renita Westall? Sounds like a normal, well-adjusted human being, doesn't she? Well, she is. She lives the naked life. She lives the clothes-free life. She's totally at peace with herself, body acceptance, body image, everything. Living the perfect life, which is what you can get when you live clothes-free as well. And we'll get to part two of my interview with Renita Westall next week. Now, before we go, a couple of things. First of all, you might have noticed that we're ending at about the one-hour mark. That's because every show will be one hour long. And that makes it easier for you in terms of planning. If you have a one-hour commute to work, well, you know, you can hear the whole show. If it's a 30-minute commute to work, well, you can hear half in the morning and half on the way home. And you can plan accordingly. So every show will be about an hour long. There are also some other terrific podcasts out there in uh uh, first one I've mentioned before uh, a couple of times during the show, Stefan Deschain uh, owns Bear Oaks Naturist Park up near Toronto. We encourage you to visit there. Everybody is nude there, every single person, including every single staff member. You walk in and you won't find anybody with clothes on. I guess the exceptions would be if somebody's doing work with heavy machinery, you know, maybe trimming bushes with the chainsaw or uh, other such acts. They'll put uh, some protective clothing on, but otherwise everyone's naked and enjoying the clothes-free naturist life. You can find his show, The Naturist Living Show, wherever podcasts are found, or visit his website. Scott Klein does a show called New Nudist Podcast. You might want to check that out wherever podcasts are found. He explores naturism as well. has some terrific episodes out there. And Evan Nix does The Naked Age, more about the history of naturism. I would recommend you check them all out. Listen to every episode. Find out what it's about. It's not weird. It's not unusual. It's actually the opposite. It's totally normal. How we've gotten society to turn all that around. Oh, being naked is weird. No, being naked is normal because that's how we were born. But check out their podcast. Check out our show as well. Naked Nudist Naturist. We drop a show every week for the time being, at least while we're in season. We'll reevaluate after that. But this has been episode number one, and obviously, if you're any good at math at all, you'll know that the next episode (laughs) is number two, and uh, we'll be dropping a show on every Saturday morning. And so we hope we've inspired you to go out there and try this, uh, a naturist resort, a nude beach. Maybe you're not quite at that level yet. Maybe you need to start, you know, sunning in the backyard, nude, walking around the inside of your house, nude, not seen by anybody. But definitely take the first steps. And when you get there, when you're able to walk into a room or a resort or a beach and take it all off, and everybody else has it all off, something will come over you, a genuine peace and tranquility that you've never experienced before. I've experienced it many times, every time I go. I experience it every single day of my life, and I hope you do too. And again, you've been listening to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, Episode 1. Now check out our website, NakedNudistAndNaturist.com And also we want to hear from you Send us an email NakedForevermore at gmail.com That's NakedForevermore at gmail.com Plan to join us for every single one of our shows here And have your clothes off when you're listening We have our clothes off when we're broadcasting Enjoying the naturist life We celebrate clothes-free living for all Remember to enjoy being naked And join us again for Naked Nudist and Naturist 
We drop a brand new show every Saturday morning, so come back and join us. Have your clothes off when you do for Naked, Nudists, and Naturists. Have a great clothes-free day. Thank you.